Happy Sunday, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV. I hope you're all doing well out there. I am doing great. I am boondocking solo in a beautiful place, but a couple of weeks ago, I had a chance to camp with some rad nomads of different ages and different work and relationship statuses and in much different ranks. And they were nice enough to let me ask them four questions about what they wish they knew before they hit the road. Now, I had to cram them into one RV on a couch to get them all in one spot to ask the questions. So it looks a little bit like a hostage video, but their answers were so amazing. So I'm going to introduce them all now so you can see their rigs and hear about them. And then we're gonna get to the questions. I have the best group of nomads here to tell you what it's really like to be on the road and what they wish they knew before they got started. Uh, I'm Ashley, this is my husband, Jared, and we travel in a minivan. We've been on the road since September of 2022, and uh, he is a project manager and I'm really a relationship consultant. So uh, my name is Marie. I've been on the road almost two years. I travel in a 2019 leisure travel van, a Serenity model. Um, and uh, I am retired, very nice. happily retired. Nice. Hi, my name's Jackie, and this is Moon Pie Mary. I am recently retired, however, I do, do volunteer work, San Francisco-based organization, Women in Clean Tech and Sustainability. I have been part-time traveling, meaning six to nine months out of the year for two years, and went through an evolution, started with a trailer, that didn't work out, that's another video, and went to car camping, tent camping, until I could figure out what I could live with and what I needed. And now I have Moon Pie Mary, and she is a game changer. Hi, my name's Debbie Bruning, and I live in a 2000 Lazy Days classy motorhome. I've been on the road, this is my third year as a full-timer, and I work from the road. My business is Dubs RV Services. I'm a certified inspector. Question number one, what were you afraid of before you hit the road that you found out later you didn't need to be afraid of. Ashley? So for me, I had safety concerns and it just took me making sure that I took the appropriate measures that made me feel more comfortable and just realizing that I just need to be cautious, aware of my surroundings, but I wasn't gonna let it stop me from the new experiences that I wanted to have. Do you feel afraid now? No. No, okay. How about you, Marie? Um, well, with me, it was like the inevitable uh, breakdowns and repairs that were going to happen on the road and how I was going to handle those. And you get, uh, unfortunately, quite so many that you start to just roll with the punches and, you know, you have people helping you and it, it all resolves itself. Yeah, and you actually really get does. very proud of yourself, how you manage to overcome all these, you know, issues. Right. It gets easier. Yeah. 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 How about you? Jackie. I almost mirror Marie. I always actually had a, a fear of not being able to get help if I needed it, and also a fear of not being able to ask for help when I needed it. And I have been able to overcome mm. all, both of those. Both of those. Right, nice. right. Mm -hmm. So are you scared now? I mean, nobody wants to break down or have some kind of a problem, but... Um... Uh, I am not in the rig that I am in now. When I was pulling the trailer, it, something was constantly breaking down. And I never got over that fear and frustration. It turned into frustration. Mm -hmm. And then it turned into, I'm doing this to simplify my life. And all of a sudden, it became more and more complicated. Oh, yeah. good so, point. Right. But I'm in a good spot now. So I do not have that fear anymore. Yeah, That's great. That's good. Mm -hmm. So I was actually afraid of the road itself, like driving across the country for me felt like it would, it was going to be such a scary situation. Like what was it going to, what were the roads going to be like? Was I going to end up at, um, on a like incline where I wasn't going to be like, be able to tow my car and take my rig over some pass that was going to feel really scary and dangerous, but it wasn't scary at all. When I actually got out there traveling across the country, you're just really going like three or four hours at a time. So you mm -hmm. just make it to the next stop. And after I traveled like several times across the country, I realized that there really wasn't anything to be afraid of. So, yeah. And I'm surprised that none of you said you were afraid to be out, you know, in nature or, you know, scared of wild animals, scared of, um, 
like I always see the guy with the hook hanging off the side of your door. Mm. Michael Myers. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> because I think a lot of people ask women, especially, aren't you afraid to be out there? None of you had that fear beforehand. I mean, there were a couple of times where I was a little bit nervous because I was out in the woods and mm -hmm. I knew there was a camper and, you know, and then you say to yourself, you know, they're not out here to, to go and kill people. They're out uh -huh. here to enjoy themselves just like I am. Yeah. So you just, you get over yeah. it. Yeah. The serial killer really isn't out there in the desert. Right. <laughs> they're in the cities. It would yeah. have to so. be a real coincidence. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I also say that I'm a true uh, crime fanatic, and so I know how to solve the problem already. Yep. So, right. so, <laughs> exactly. And statistically, you're much more likely to be, well, killed by somebody you know. Right. So travel yeah. with the right. right people, and also in the city. So. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So if you're a solo yeah. female traveler not in the city, your chances are pretty good. You'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. 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 And I think, too, is just as we've all do, is listen to our instincts mm -hmm. and our intuition, mm -hmm. and... Yep, that's it. Yeah. It doesn't I, feel yeah. right. Yep. Move. If it doesn't, it doesn't feel, feel right, right, you move, move. your spot. Yeah. 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 So I think for all of you, the fear, whatever your fear was, it diminished over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. greatly outweighed by the joy of what we're doing. You know, <laughs> yes. that just totally... You know, it may be there, but the, the benefits far outweigh yeah. any concerns. Mm -hmm. And most of the things that we're afraid of, they're bigger in our minds and mm -hmm. our thoughts than they are in reality. Yeah. Yeah. They're really not mm -hmm. that scary. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, second question. What was more difficult than you imagined it would be before you got on the road? Ashley? So mine was not having a private bathroom. Ah. <laughs> so I really recommend just educating yourself, exploring the different toilet and shower options that are there mm -hmm. and finding out what you're the most comfortable with to deplete. What did you decide to do? Can I ask what your toilet and shower solutions were? So we're in the minivan and so we just have a uh, portable toilet uh, that we use our bags and our kitty litter and then for our shower we typically are going to use Planet Fitness. Um, we've done truck stops as well. We actually do have a uh, portable shower that we can use if we're out on like you know private land and things like that as well. Yeah. Or public land. Yeah. Okay great. How about you Marie? Well, I think what kind of surprised me was the amount of time that you need to do all the research and figure out where yeah. you're going. And, you know, there's so many apps out there. And you're looking at all the apps. You're looking at reviews. You're trying to see what do I want to <laughs> see when I'm in that area. It takes a lot of time. That was a lot more than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Difficulties for me, oddly enough, it was, I think you can relate to this, driving east coast, west coast. From Washington, I, I drove the Cascades and then the Sierra Nevadas down to Tahoe. And so I just, I never really left the ridges. I had no idea of the vertical height and straight down the mountains were. Oh, yes. Versus oh, the my, the mountains that I live in. Yes. Mm -hmm. And because of the, the fires, there's miles and miles and miles and miles of no trees. Mm. So what once gave you a visible, I think, comfort, maybe horizon of looking over and seeing something there. Mm -hmm. There's no trees. Mm -hmm. So you're going thousands of feet down. I was white knuckle for mm. miles upon miles and miles. I did not expect that. I'm normally not a scaredy cat with stuff like that, but you I'm was, glad that I, didn't happen to me. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I it, it, it was so unpleasant. I will never take that route again. So, how do you plan your routes now? Do you have a solution so you don't have to? Do I that? do. I don't go over the mountains. <laughs> she goes around. I, I, I literally go around the mountain. Literally, yeah. I'll take three days out of my yeah route, too. and yeah. I will go around the mountains. We can. Because I can. Yeah. Yeah. You can also ask other people. Like, I know when I was um, traveling out in Colorado, I actually asked Robin about the route that would be best that would take me yeah. where I wouldn't feel like I was on a cliff, you mm -hmm. know, going around these huge vertical drops and then around these, you know, bends. So I found out, you can find out from other people or Facebook groups, mm -hmm. which route is best. And a lot of other travelers will know. There's actually YouTube channels that show you routes um, that are just the driving no words, no nothing. So you oh. can say it like truckers do it. So drive from here to here. You can see the route. Also, there's a website called the flattest route.com. I wish somebody would make an app. It would kill. If you, know, it, 
There's Somebody maps. needs to make it. Yeah. There's Google Maps where you could put the little person on the road. Mm -hmm. I've done that mm -hmm. to see, like, but mostly it's like, is this prettier or this prettier? And I draw, I'll be oh, yeah, doing a little person, too. and I'm like, oh, I'll yeah. go this route. Because, you know, when you've got something big and heavy behind you pushing you or, mm -hmm. you know, you're yeah. big and you're going over the edge and it's a drop, that's scary. Yeah. I mean, one tire and blow the roads out, are this you're done. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Can I go back and, and um, before I should have asked uh, Marie? How long does it take you to find a spot? And do you feel pretty comfortable finding your, your camping locations now? Um, I feel pretty comfortable because I have some really good apps. And, you know, it varies. I think a lot of it is, uh, you know, it takes like, I don't know, four hours or so to find like the next spot to camp. But then it's like, well, what should I do when I'm there? How many days should I spend? Oh, is this worth going looking at? Let me see what they said. And that sort of yeah. stuff. That's where it gets time consuming. Yeah. and like. Because um, you yeah. really do your homework. Yeah. Beforehand. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I like to know. Sometimes I feel really bad because I feel sometimes I spend more time doing my homework than getting out and doing things. Right. Because <laughs> I'm planning for the next trip, but I haven't it's visited. Part of the, the fun, too. Yeah. We yeah. need to find new places. Yeah, How about you, Debbie? You know, I actually have the opposite where it was easier than I thought. It mm. wasn't as difficult. I had in my mind, I had all this anxiety about what if I don't find a, a parking spot or a boondocking spot? You know, what if I'm driving in this situation. What, I mean, it's all the what ifs mm -hmm. were in my head while I was at home. But when I got out there, it just seemed so much easier. It just flowed. Mm -hmm. I never really have a problem. If I'm driving um, from one side of the country to the other, I, I can always stop at a rest stop. There's so many apps that you can look oh, at. Yeah. There's Cracker Barrels. And then once mm -hmm. I get out west, it's like BLM land is everywhere. Mm -hmm. I've made friends on the road. Some people fear that they won't, um, they'll be alone or lonely. And I've met so many oh, people yeah. on the road that I have friendships in, like, it seems like almost every state. Mm -hmm. I could always connect with somebody. Mm -hmm. I One time I was driving and I was going into Custer State Park, and it was like 100 degrees. And I was freaking out because I had gotten a harvest host at the time. And when I landed at the first harvest host, I was so hot that I, I was, like, miserable. So I just reached out to a Facebook group, and this one woman connected with me and said, oh, I have a spot on the side of my house where you can get hookup. Come nice. on over, and you can stay the night. Wow. And it go. was, and then now we're friends. We're yeah. hiking buddies. Because right. you're so not afraid to ask. I'm not yeah. afraid to ask. <laughs> right. 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 Well, was there anything that was harder than you imagined? Um, You know, I think... Probably just the most frustrating part is like you have to when you have to dump your tanks and like you have to get propane and stuff because what happens is you start to get really comfortable when you boondock like I do you get comfortable in a spot and then you're you have to like look for a place where you can go dump right. and get all the supplies right and it's not really that that's difficult it's just that that is something that you don't want to have to do necessarily so it's yeah. a little bit. Annoying. Yeah, it's in the back of your mind. It's just, oh, I need yeah. to get water. Where and and you have water? to conserve water, and yeah. you're always watching your water and everything that you have mm -hmm. so you don't use mm -hmm. it up. So I guess yeah. the, that would be my just difficulty. A lot of chores. A lot of chores. Yeah, you're constantly doing stuff. Yeah. It, you're always searching busy. Searching for your spot or mm -hmm. doing your chores so you can get to the, your mm -hmm. next spot. The next question is, how has being a nomad changed or enhanced their lives? Mm -hmm. Ashley? So for me, I feel like I'm starting my life over. Um, I'm really learning what my true wants and needs are. I'm learning um, what kind of physical things that I want to have around me, what kind of energy from other people I'm willing to tolerate. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm learning what drains me, what motivates me, and I'm going out there and I'm just trying and, and experiencing things that I never thought I was capable of, and it's really showing me what I can do. That's inspiring to That's me. Nice. It is very inspiring. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Marie? Uh, for me, like when I, uh, RVing for me is not camping, it's really traveling. Mm -hmm. I love to travel, I love to see things, changes, love uh, scenery that changes, and so it's really, I mean, I just love every day. I mean, in beautiful scenery, I get to meet great people, I meet, do wonderful things. Uh, so it's, it, for me, it's a huge enhancement to my life mm -hmm. and stuff. And, you know, you call the shots, you do what you want, you go where you want, when you want. I mean, it's, it's incredibly freeing. So yeah. mm -hmm. that's how it's enhanced it for me. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, Jackie? Uh, I have to, again, Mira Marie, because I travel six to nine months out of the year, I consider myself a part-timer, not a full-timer, because I still have a six and bricks. Mm -hmm. But, guess a lot. 
it's still a lot to go and I feel like I'm kind of going back to my own roots my mom used to always say that I was born with happy traveling feet mm. and I was the one who would get lost inside of a snowstorm drift <laughs> or the creek or something it was me always yeah so I feel this this is the opportunity now to learn how to chill I'm learning how to chill it's taken a while it's taken almost a year to learn how to chill mm -hmm. to learn how to go with the flow be happy and just travel and kind of do what I want when I want within limits within reason and I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Debbie? So I know one thing that I feel is that how it enhanced my life is I don't need near the things that I thought I needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am living so little in comparison to how I used to live. Mm -hmm. And I could probably even go smaller. Mm -hmm. And you kind of learn as you go, as you're on the road, what you need and what you don't need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I also, I have such joy in my life. I feel happy. I feel free all the time. And it's just, it's amazing to me, the whole world, we, or the country that we have out here that we are looking at and we can, you know, travel to, and there's just so much to see and do. So when I get tired of a place or frustrated, I just move to a new location yep. and it's just that easy. And I just, I don't know, I just feel like a lot of joy in this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I really love it. It's not that it's easy. Oh. There's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things that are not easy uh -huh. and you have to be the type of person that can, um, be open to change and those little struggles and to be able, you're going to have to tinker with things or mm -hmm. find a mechanic if you can't. But overall, the joy outweighs anything negative. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Question number four, when you told your friends and family what you were going to be doing, how did they react? <laughs> Ashley? I didn't ask for permission. <laughs> just did Good. It. We, I just did it. We were saying this is what we're going to do and, and uh, we'll have, you know, things in place to where we can stay connected and stay in touch. And um, we have select family members and friends that um, we send our GPS coordinates to. So when we're in different areas, they, they know where we're mm -hmm. at, but it was a decision, you know, for, for us and our happiness. And so that was, that's great. How it was presented. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Marie? Uh, well, um, my family thought it was a bit harebrained, like, especially, you know, full time, you're giving everything up and you're going out on the road and like, you know, you don't know how hard it's going to be, you know, this, it's going to be so expensive. You think it's not all this sort of, so a lot of like, you know, you don't know what's out there. And then the other half were like, didn't believe I was going to do it. And then it was like, oh my God, like they thought That's I was right. a dreamer. Yeah. for right. five years right. looking at so, RVs mm -hmm. and all this mm -hmm. sort of stuff. And then when I bought my RV, they were like, oh, my God, she what did they, it. What do they think now? Uh, they're very happy for me. They're following right. me on Facebook. They're like, oh, my God, post more pictures. Mm -hmm. You know, that's so gorgeous. And they're like, live, you know, a few have definitely said I'm living vicariously through yes. you. Because, and yep. the amount of people that you meet that say, oh, my God, you're living my dream. And mm -hmm. um, it, it's just it's just been great. So yeah. yeah, now everyone's totally psyched about it and right. stuff. So, Jackie, I thought my family was going to think it was the most ridiculous thing I've mm -hmm. ever done in my life, and it was just the opposite. They just looked at me and said, "Went back to the happy traveling feet <laughs> um, as a kid." And I said, "What took you so long?" Yeah, they, they, mm -hmm. they said, "Of course. Why would you? We would not expect you to do anything else." That's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. So. I had did not have an issue, and I do. I'm not. I don't have a big social media presence, but we do have ways that I share my pictures and travels, and they love it. And mm -hmm. where are you now? And mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah my brother has, Very you know, happy. that uh, you can follow people on Google Maps. Yeah. So he'll be like, are you mm -hmm. in the foothills of Yuma? Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's a good point. Always yeah. give your location to, to somebody. Yeah. somebody. So they yeah. know where you're at. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Actually, Debbie and I follow each other. So I'm like, hey, Debbie, I see your little face. You know? <laughs> right. Um, so, Debbie, how about you? Friends you, and family? You know, it's funny because I think that it, for, when I first started looking into this life and I was binging the um, YouTube, my mom's actually the one that sent me my first first Bob Wells video oh. and she was just sending it to me because she thought it was cute and then all of a sudden I was like hyper focused and that's all I watched was how to have mm -hmm. this life mm -hmm. and I was I think they thought I was I had fallen off my rocker like really I was you know what is she doing what is going on I was planning it I was like talking about it all the time and mm -hmm. then um, once I really like as the years passed and I really started progressing towards doing it 
I think that um, they were really on board. My mom was like my biggest fan. Mm. So my, you know, they, the friends and family just love it. They, they love to watch my travels. Mm -hmm. So I post a lot of stuff on social media and they're always following me and they love it. So yeah, yeah, I don't know if that yeah. translate that translated the way that I meant it. Um, so like for me, we just didn't leave room for opinions is, is what <laughs> I meant. And so um, it, it was literally just um, we were planning. You know, I, I did the research. We kind of created, you know, our, our plan and, and what we were going to do. And then um, we put our house up for sale and didn't even really have a ton of conversations about that <laughs> initially because we were starting to kind of, you know, get, get everything mm -hmm. ready. And then we just, you know, just individually told the family, like, hey, this is what we're doing. And... Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah, that is great. Really that is good like for you. Guess, they worry yeah. so much what other people are yeah. going to mm -hmm. think. And yeah. you, you knew your own mind. What mm -hmm. do they think about it now? Do, have they told you? Um, I mean, everybody, you know, loves it. I mean, they they love, you know, when they see the different things that we get to, to do and experience and, and, and definitely are, are very supportive. I mean, of course, you have the ones that are like, are you being safe? Are you mm -hmm. aware? You know, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. But, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 This is my favorite question. If there's somebody out there that is thinking about doing what you're doing, what advice would you give them? Ashley? I just think that everyone has different uh, financial means and physical abilities and life skills that sometimes I feel like it's a little bit challenging to give people advice because I don't want someone to feel that this is like a cookie cutter kind of lifestyle and if you don't do it a certain way then you know you're not going to be happy or successful with it um, but I also want them to realize you know as Debbie said things are going to pop up things are going to happen you know mm -hmm. and you may have you know friends and, and family and, and even strangers that may question you know why you're doing this there's gonna be days you're gonna question why you did this right. and <laughs> if you should keep doing it you know so I guess really my advice would be is just to get really clear on what your why is mm -hmm. why are you doing mm -hmm. this what do you, what do you want to get from this do you want to grow do you want to find your peace do you want to just have fun and go out and, and see things mm -hmm. you know what what is it um, yeah. and then the other thing I would just add is that you're not homeless you're free. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. You good, know, good. and We're not homeless, we're free. That's <laughs> you great. are choosing to, you know, live your life outside of this square box that we're told is normal. And you had the courage to take that leap of faith to, to go out mm -hmm. there and live your life how only pe other people dream about. And that's so that's right. a really special That's thing. awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Marie? So I have two, two different things. One, well, what I did is I went and, you know, I did a lot of research, went to shows, I rented, I went on five RV trips with different RVs, different sizes, lengths, everything, so I could see what I would like, you know, I, you know, just the regular class B van was way too small, the 28 footer was way too big, so it got me to where I wanted to be. Um, so I think it's really good because you also want to know is this lifestyle for you? I mean, you don't want to go out and just buy something and then like have to deal with all this stuff that you didn't know was going to happen. Um, so that would be my first recommendation. Then just another thing <clears throat> to put you a little bit at ease to Debbie's point about you're out on the road and you're thinking, oh, you know, you're, you're by yourself. and all, But you're, you're not. There are so many clubs you can join. I, I belong to so many clubs. I go to different rallies and stuff. I've met people on the road like we all have. Mm -hmm. I've traveled with these people. You know, we hook up in different states and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, you make really strong bonds and everything. So it's not a lonely lifestyle. Now, if you want it to be alone, you can't. You want to be at the top of the mountain by yourself, you can. But it's by choice. It's not, you know, so yep. don't be afraid of that is what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say that we have all sorts of resources now and tools that we can go mm -hmm. to to learn and understand. However, I would caution of not to put yourself into a box that you think you're supposed to be in. I started out as with a tra traveler trailer it was a disaster just for me, not for everybody, mm -hmm. just for me, because I thought that that's what I needed to do. I thought the first thing you did was you bought a trailer and then that's what you did. And then I, rather than giving up and getting frustrated, I said, step back. I tent camped and car camped for two years, nine months out of the year, mm -hmm. until I could figure out my wants and needs and what was making me happy which has led to the rig that I'm in now and I'm very very happy 
be flexible though because in three years I'm you know I'm getting a little rig envy in some of these <laughs> meetups that we have so if we had this discussion in three years I might be you know in a 30 footer yeah but so be flexible it's okay to say you know what this worked three years ago but it's not working now so right. it's okay to change it it's fine to be flexible yep mm -hmm. I agree and Debbie well, I would say start out small. There's so many pieces of advice to give, but I would say start out small with the type of RV that you want to get. Whether it's a minivan or a truck and trailer or a motor home, mm -hmm. you know, you just start out with um, something you can afford and the smallest, you know, RV or car, you know, van, whatever, and try it out. See what that's all about. Because a lot of times people get into these like really big RVs and they get out mm. there and they don't realize certain things. Like if you want to get out there and boondock and you've got an all electric big, you know, class A diesel coach and you can't use any of your things because you don't have the power to do that. You know, you're going to be in a mm -hmm. situation where you're into a lot of, you know, that's a big investment. So start out with something you can afford, get out there, see what you like, see if you enjoy boondocking before, you know, before you, you know, invest all that money into something, see what you want. And then don't forget to hire an inspector when you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were they? Yeah. Where were they six years ago? <laughs> I'll see you all next week with an all new video. Until then, everybody out there. Happy, Happy travels, travels and, and be free. free. <laughs> that was fun.